Here's another one. Persona 4 Dancing All Night is the definition of a game nobody asked for, but my god did we need it. On its surface, Dancing All Night is seemingly a half-hearted attempt by Atlas to capitalize on the popularity of Persona 4. The first spoken sentence of the game mutters the words, here's another one, as if Atlas is well aware of the Persona 4 assembly line it has created. But if you were to reach out to the truth, you'd find that Dancing All Night is in fact a smartly designed celebration of Persona 4's adored soundtrack, and a pretty damn good excuse to spend just a little more time with Narukami and the gang. Let's talk about why that is. Dancing All Night is exactly what you'd expect from a J-pop inspired rhythm game. Combo building, high score chasing, and unlockables that offer up all kinds of Persona themed fan service. Gameplay wise, Dancing All Night is nothing to write home to Inaba about. Star shaped symbols appear at the center of the screen and move outwards. The direction in which these symbols are floating signify which of the Vita space buttons must be pressed. Left, up, and down for the left side of the screen, X, O, and triangle for the right. These button inputs come in a few basic forms, single, simultaneous, and holds. And then you have the blue circles. Like all other icons, these appear at the center of the screen and begin expanding outwards towards the edge. Flicking a thumbstick at the right time will register these circles as successful inputs. Occasionally, colored circles with the word fever written on them will appear. Nailing three of these will initiate fever mode. Fever as a gameplay mechanic is a great way to get a good combo going, build a higher score, or lift yourself from fail to clear status. But most importantly, Fever Mode is the harbinger of some pretty awesome fan service. If a song allows for it, a partner chosen by the player can join the lead dancer out on the stage. Most Persona 4 fans will find something endearing about Kanji and Naoto getting footloose on a dance floor together. I, for one, think it's absolutely adorable. Now for the jealous types that don't want to see their waifu Chie getting down with another guy, you have the option to go it alone. Aesthetically, circles can be pretty boring, but these bring with them that edgy style players have come to expect from Persona in the form of audible input feedback. Clicking the thumbsticks gives you a nice DJ scratch. This effect comes in a variety of sounds. The one that plays depends on the direction in which a stick is tilted. Moreover, these circles are smartly placed throughout tracks, so going for them will allow players to get directly involved with the music and tastefully get their DJ on. It's a small touch, but it adds audible incentive to get better at the game, as well as a new dynamic to an already well-mixed soundtrack. The circle inputs are somewhat optional. Missing them does not harm your score or affect the combo counter. This speaks directly to how Dancing All Night handles difficulty. The game slowly introduces and increases the complexity of the various button inputs over the course of its four difficulties. Dancing All Night is also smart in the way that it doesn't just throw mechanics at you with the expectation that you'll master them right away. Instead, Dancing All Night allows players to tackle its more advanced mechanics, like the circles that will become increasingly more important over the game's four difficulty modes, at your own pace. On easy and normal difficulty, they can largely be ignored. However, players that can make use of the thumbsticks have a better shot at landing the largely elusive King Crazy rating. Moreover, they are vital for clearing songs on harder difficulties. This is because Dancing All Night adopts the common, just because you made it to the end of the track doesn't mean you cleared it, method of progression, meaning high scores are not just for show. Despite this, Dancing All Night is a fair and inviting game that is certainly approachable for fans of the original Persona 4, who may be more accustomed to turn-based combat rather than real-time grooving. But for rhythm game veterans seeking a challenge, Dancing All Night has more than enough on offer. Its hardest difficulty, All Night Mode, is a track-long onslaught of inputs. So yeah, none of this sounds like a Persona game, does it? Don't worry, because it's everything outside the gameplay that gives Dancing All Night that distinct Persona feel. For starters, the menus in Dancing All Night borrow all the colors from Persona 4's palette and beautifully mash them together with every translucent hue of a disco ball. It's like Saturday Night Fever melted all over Persona 4's menus, and I love it. But it doesn't stop there. The rest of the presentation is definitely more Rise than Hanako. The dance stages are a cool disco take on the Mayanaka environments. They're colorful, bright, but slightly off kilter and twisted, as all Persona settings should be. The one downside, every once in a while things get a little too hectic with an overabundance of effects appearing on the screen. This was a serious problem during one of Yosuke's tracks, Backside of the TV, where an overuse of the color yellow made the star-shaped symbols of the same color much harder to see. But I digress. 
because Narukami and the gang are looking good. The slightly deformed character models featured in the original Persona 4 and its 2012 golden facelift have been given the old Chie Galactic pun in favor of ones that are more properly proportioned. The cast now looks much closer to what we've seen in Catherine in the trailers of the upcoming Persona 5. It's probably safe to assume Dancing All Night is running on the same engine. Unsurprisingly, this shift in art direction brings more personality to a cast of characters that were already brimming with charm. Not to mention, true-to-life character proportions are important in a game about dancing. Which brings us to quite possibly the most well-thought-out part of Dancing All Night, the choreography. Let's be real for a second. Taking a beloved cast of characters like Persona 4's and throwing them in a dancing game is a ridiculous proposition. Dancing All Night's existence alone has surely cheapened the cast of Persona 4 for many fans. However, Atlas took serious care when developing Dancing All Night. They have seemingly went out of their way to make a rhythm game that fit the cast of Persona 4, rather than shoehorning said cast into a game they had no business being in. This is best seen in the way the choreography fits the personality of each character. Teddy prances around the stage comedically, appearing as a bear, human, and cross-dresser. Yukiko's dance moves are soft, flowing, and innocent. Chie's, like they've been lifted right out of Trial of the Dragon, complete with punches and kicks. Yosuke and Kanji, well their dancing is just about as awkward as their personalities call for. Now why exactly is everyone dancing? Persona 4 was a JRPG about summoning monsters to kill other monsters. Well there's two answers to that question, one real and one fake. The real answer has to do with Dancing All Night's story which despite appearing to be absolutely ridiculous, makes a bewildering amount of sense within the world of Persona 4. Truly, it's no more ridiculous than the entire cast becoming proficient enough musicians after a weekend's worth of practice to perform alongside Risei at the Junez concert. Dancing on Might reintroduces a minor character from Persona 4, the briefly mentioned rival of Risei Kujikawa, Kanami Mashita. Kanami and her J-pop idol group, Kanami in Kitchen, are set to perform at the I Festival, which is being hosted in Inaba this year. The idols of Kanami in Kitchen are the central focus of Dancing All Night's story. Similar to Japan's real-world J-pop idols, the members of Kanami in Kitchen are assigned roles. The short-haired girl is the tomboy, the smartest one is the cute one, etc. None of these roles accurately reflect their true personalities, but acting in a manner different than what is expected from them upsets both their managers and fans. This gives each member of Kanami and Kitchen an understandable identity crisis that fits thematically with Persona 4's message of self-acceptance. Unfortunately, this sad state of affairs only gets worse when the members of Kanami and Kitchen view a mysterious internet video that lands them in a world similar to the one found inside the TV. It's in this new area of the Shadow World, called the Mayonaka Stage, that the idols of Kanami and Kitchen are taunted by a disembodied voice into rejecting their true personalities in favor of the ones given to them. This transforms the girls into jarring, twisted variations of the personalities projected onto them. Now, for some unclear reason, there is no fighting allowed on the Mayanaka stage. The only way the investigation team can deal with these shadows is by dancing, which is in line with the J-pop focus of the plot. However, do not let the campiness of these dance battles fool you. This is a dark, well-thought-out social commentary of one of Japan's biggest entertainment industries. From a gameplay standpoint, Dancing All Night's story mode isn't all that different from what we got in Arena and Ultimax. A simple yet effective visual novel approach, with dance battles sprinkled throughout an almost fully voice acted 10 hour experience. This time around, the story is more focused than in the aforementioned spin offs. The writers did away with some of the bloat found in Arena and Ultimax. There isn't a single optional path or false ending to be found. For those of you looking for a deeper visual novel experience, Dancing All Night will be a letdown. The story mode only features minor dialogue options that garner interesting responses from the cast, but don't affect the plot in the least. However, this is a much more interesting and focused story compared to the other spin-offs on Alder. Now the fake answer. Dancing All Night's absolutely superb, but relatively short track list. The game includes a rather disappointing total of 26 tracks. Being sold at $49.99, we could assume Atlas is employing the largest card size available for the Vita but possibly ran out of space due to the large amount of voice acting and the fidelity of the game's music. Don't fret though, more tracks are on the way in the form of free and paid DLC. The free songs boost the total track count up to 30. The game features some of Persona 4's best songs, such as Heartbeat, Heartbreak, and Pursuing Your True Self. These two tracks, as well as others, appear in the game more than once, 
both in their original recordings as well as their hit or miss remixes. Conversely, all versions of Your Affection have my undivided affection. The repetition in the song list is somewhat of a party foul and an altogether great dance celebration, but the remixes do well to stand apart from their source material. The Kazuka Atlas remix of Pursuing Your True Self only reuses vocals from the original song. The instrumentation is made up of newly recorded material. Simply put, Persona 4 Dancing All Night couldn't even make Mr. Moraoka's shit list. It continues the themes of Persona 4 in an offbeat but clever way. It doesn't cheapen its cast of characters, but rather stands as a testament to just how dynamic they are. Sure, as far as rhythm games go, it's typical but still an absolute joy to play. Furthermore, Dancing All Night brings something new to the genre with its engaging story. Small track list aside, if you feel the need to reach out to the truth and pursue your true self, then it's time to make history with Persona 4 Dancing All Night. It's worthy of your affection. Every day is great at your Junez. Hey there, my name is Gerald Dimania, writer of this review. This is the first review I've ever written, so I don't know, be gentle in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, subscribe. If you have some constructive feedback, be a total senpai, leave it down below. Also, if you enjoyed Persona 4, check out our top 10 JRPG battle themes. It's a good one, it's got some Persona 4 love for you. Catch you later.